Hello there. The pub or public house has for a long time now <laughs> been at the very heart of Scotland's communities, bringing people together to socialise and to drink, to drink alcohol. But uh, pubs have not always been as they are now. Um, before the beginning of the 19th century, the drinking area or the socialising area in inns and taverns was invariably just one room with tables and chairs and maybe a few long benches or settles. There was no bar counter and uh, the, your drink was brought to your table, ale in a, a jug for example, to be dispensed into ale glasses or tankards. Um, and as I say, the, the bar counter appeared only at the beginning of the 19th century. Uh, the photos that follow will, will, I hope, just give you a, a kind of glimpse of how pubs used to be. Um, I mean, there is a variety of uh, ages in the photos that follow from Victorian period right up until fairly recently. But I hope they will show you a, a, just a variety of architecture, the way things used to be, how things have perhaps developed over time. And it's not always been to everyone's tastes. You know, some people like new stuff and modernity, if that's a word. And some people just like old things and the way things used to be. I strongly suspect I'm one of the, the latter. Um, and throughout time, um, pubs have changed owners. Some pubs have changed owners many times. And um, more often than not, uh, the, the pub has changed during that change of ownership. Um, there's been, the pub has probably gone through a complete transformation that has seen its exterior and interior either revamped or renovated, or in most cases just ripped out and uh, chuck in the bin. And in far too many occasions what was chucked in the bin was architecturally very, very good. We've lost a lot of really good pubs over the decades. Um, you know, things change and that's just the way things are, unfortunately. Um, I hope you enjoy what follows. Well, let's get things started in Edinburgh and a pub at the junction of what used to be South Richmond Street and the Pleasance. These days, South Richmond Street and indeed North Richmond Street has been completely obliterated, demolished a year or two after the photo was taken. Although the pub and the building in which it sits have gone, as has the whole street, Today you can still see the shape of that narrow curving junction as echoed in the shape of the pavement. It was a rather attractive building and it's always interesting to see the adverts for beer displayed in windows. Bass in bottle and dishers ten guinea ale. At the time the photo was taken, in 1927, the building in the background on the right hand side was a police station. That building is still there, but is no longer a police station. Leaping forward in time now, to 1963, and the Black Bull Inn in Johnston's High Street. Constructed in what looks like 1775, this building is no longer with us. But again, it's interesting to see the beer adverts in the windows, Guinness is good for you, and a sign promoting Blair's Alawa Ales. There were many breweries in Scotland at that time, just before a whole range of takeovers and closures kicked in. And while it is tempting to just recall William Younger's and William McEwan's and the Scottish Newcastle breweries that they became, other major breweries existed all over the country, especially in places like Alawa which for centuries was a major brewing centre. Just a few years later, in 1971, a 
and it's the old bar at 48 Main Street, New Haven, just outside Edinburgh. It's a fairly plain frontage, but again we've got a great window advert for William Younger's beers and old Father William himself. Although we can't properly see it, the shadow of the bar sign shows a star, and I do wonder if this was maybe the star trademark of Dryborough's Brewery, yet another of Scotland's major breweries at the time. Not sure if it's close to opening time, but there always seemed to be folk hanging around outside pubs back then, and maybe they still do today. The old bar no longer exists. Not a great quality of photo, but a great photo nonetheless. It's the High Street in Falkirk around 1920. This is the Cross Keys Inn, and on the night of August 25th, 1787, poet Robert Burns slept here. The building and the Robert Burns plaque survives, but it's no longer an inn. A much better quality of photo now, and it's the Salutation Bar at 28 Shore Street in Anstruther. Excellent window adverts for Murray's 90 shilling pale ale. These days it's no longer the Salutation, but it is still a bar. As I've already said, there were many breweries supplying beer to pubs in the old days. And it's a rather strange thing to say, but most of those breweries have gone. Of all the breweries that Scotland once had, Tenants and Belhaven are about the only ones left. Sure, you can still buy beers by William Younger and William McCune, but the original breweries have gone and one can only guess where these beers are brewed today. This bottle contains Aitken's 90 shillings ale, brewed in Falkirk. And in this image dating to the 1950s, we see a woman sitting at a light box in Aitken's brewery, checking the full level in bottles passing by on the production line. Of course, some taverns didn't sell alcohol. Many reckoned it was a source of evil. This late 19th century photo shows a coffee tavern at 318 Govan Road, at the sign centre end of Govan Road, and long gone. Like the many temperance places that existed at the time, they didn't sell alcohol. But you didn't just go in and sit at a table politely sipping your coffee. There were pool and billiards tables upstairs to take men's minds off any thought of strong drink. Further along Govan Road now, and the Fairfield Bar at the junction with Goldsby Street in the mid-1970s, and not far from the main entrance to Fairfield's shipyard. The tenement in which it sits looks a tad worse for wear in the photo, but still stands today, as does the pub, now under the name of the old Govan Arms. Through to Edinburgh now, and the old golf tavern in Barclay Terrace, at the edge of Brunsfield Links, around the first quarter of the 20th century. Its name comes from the fact that golf was first played on the adjacent links from the mid-15th century. It's an old established tavern that still exists and, apart from some curious false window shutters put in place in recent years, looks the exact same externally. But on this occasion we are allowed a peep inside. Dating again to the first quarter of the 20th century, we are treated to a lovely old bar interior 
in a style that has all but vanished. This interior probably dates to a remodelling of the tavern in 1898. The interior today looks very, very different and practically everything you can see here has gone. As has already been said, bar styles have changed over the years and most pubs have gone through any number of renovations and remodelling to cater for changing social trends. This is the Cockdale Bar in Glasgow Airport around 1966. The word sparse springs to mind. I can't imagine you were really meant to enjoy yourself or even feel remotely comfortable in here. It's a modern, minimalist interior created at a time when we cared more for fashion than tradition. And again, another very basic bar with just a hint of luxury. It's the Gentleman's Bar in a club at 84 to 87 Princes Street in Edinburgh in 2001. The few prints on the wall do nothing to take one's mind off the fact that the bar counter is just a big plain rectangle of wood and there's not a beer pump handle or indeed any alcohol in sight. It's almost as if they're trying to hide the fact that it is a bar. Yet another very basic bar with an old wooden counter and very little in the way of shaping or carving. It's just a rectangular lump of wood. This is the third gallery bar in Edinburgh's Royal Lyceum Theatre around 1930. It's a no-frills affair that serves simply as a dispensing mechanism for a quick topping up of alcohol during the break. Thankfully, at last, we've got a real bar interior. This is the Woodhall Arms in Curry in the first quarter of the 20th century. That's my sort of bar counter, and there's a heck of a lot going on there. Adverts for Aitchison's Pale Ale, Aitken's Sparkling Ale, boxes of Smith's Potato Crisps, and no liquor supplied after 9pm. The good old days. The Woodhall Arms still exists, but has been modernised, which basically means everything you can see in this lovely old photograph has gone. Glasgow Cross now, and a pub at the corner of Salt Market and London Road during the First World War. Many pubs were located at corners. In addition to all the adverts on the gable end of the adjacent tenement, there are adverts in the window for munitions ale. The exterior looks much the same these days, although the stained glass windows below the large arched windows have been replaced with plain glass, and the pub is now called the Tallbooth. Through to Paisley now, and a rather plain frontage on the Wheat Sheaf Tavern at 14 St Mirren Street, possibly close to Causeway Side Street. I'm struggling to pinpoint exactly where the photo was taken, but I think all buildings shown have gone. It is not known when this photo was taken, probably late 19th century. Another corner bar, called appropriately the Corner Bar, at the junction of Lothian Street and Potter Row in Edinburgh in 1929. Again, we have folk hanging around outside. Rather sad to see the number of children hanging around outside many of these pubs, 
perhaps wondering what their father is getting up to inside that smelly, smoky place. All buildings shown have gone. A traditional looking pub at or close to a corner at 200 to 202 Pleasance in Edinburgh in 1927 and more men hanging around outside looking more than a tad suspicious to me. My guess is that this was at the corner of Pleasance and Bowman Place. All buildings shown have gone, to be replaced with what I can only describe as some sort of bland concrete box used for housing. Zooming forward in time, from the east to the west of the country, to Glasgow in 1971. From a location point of view, this bar has cracked it, in that not only is it positioned at a corner, it's also beside a subway station with lots of folk coming and going. This is Cowcaddon's underground station entrance, which looks very different these days. The tenement in which the bar and the station entrance sits have gone, and the scene is totally unrecognisable, dominated now by multi-storey flats, motorways and noisy intersections. It's 1928 now, and this is the hole in the wall in, in the High Street in Dumfries. Although there's a few apostrophes in place of missing letters, and it should probably be pronounced as the whole of the war. It's a very sharp photo that reveals many things. There's Dempster's Fruit and Sweetie Shop. That's a combination you don't see very often in the retail world. And above the close entrance leading to the inn, there's a wonderful pair of lines supporting a wooden board with an image of what we presume was the high street in days of old, along with some wording. The board has gone, but the lines are still there, now either side of a sign bearing an image of poet Robert Burns. The whole of the war still exists and continues to be a wonderful old inn. Another Robert Burns connection, this time at Pusey Nancy's hostelry in Mocklin in the late 19th century. Burns lived in a room in Mocklin for a while with his wife Jean Armour and visited this hostelry many times. I am delighted to say that Pusey Nancy's still exists and although the thatched roof and gable end lettering have gone, it looks much the same today. Yet another thatched cottage and link with poet Robert Burns. This is the Tam O'Shanter Inn in Ayers High Street in the early 20th century. It's still an inn, and it's still thatched. What a lovely old pub. Well, clearly was remaining on the thatched cottage theme. This is the Waverley Tavern in Water Row in Govan in the 1860s. It's very hard to imagine that Govan ever looked like this. You can tell it's an early photograph by the height of the top hats. We're looking up Water Row from close to the ferry terminal over the River Clyde, and you can see a chimney in the background. At that time, there was a dye works behind the cottages and a shipbuilding yard nearby. This map of the same period as the photo shows Water Row, and I'm inclined to guess that this is the Waverley Tavern. A 
a very prim and proper scene in Falkland and the Bruce Arms in sometime around the first half of the 20th century. It's an old building, part of which goes back to the year 1607 and has probably been added to and fiddled with over the centuries. But it's just such a calm, uncluttered scene with just one car and a group of gentlemen looking at it, wondering perhaps either what it's doing here or how fast it can go. The building is still an inn and is now called the Bruce. It's the Cramond Inn in Cramond, not far from Edinburgh, sometime in what is probably the late 19th century, and there's clearly some sort of event happening. We've got bicycles, including a woman with a long skirt, who's either posing with her bicycle or posing with someone else's bicycle just for the photo, and a man playing the fiddle at the side of the road. The East of Scotland Cycling Club are having their annual outing and today this part of Cramond looks exactly the same. The Cramond Inn still exists. Right into Edinburgh now and it's the Empire Palace Bar in Potter Row in 1929 not long before everything in the photo was demolished. We can see adverts for the ubiquitous draft bass and their easily recognisable red triangle trademark. If there's one thing bass were good at, it was advertising. Remaining in Edinburgh are more properly Leith and 67 to 77 shore right beside the water of Leith in 1924. You can just see the railings beside the water in the bottom left. It's an interesting jumble of buildings and you can see the pub on the right hand side. It's quite hard to read but I think the sign above the door reads Key Bar and I suppose all those men are just waiting for it to open. All buildings in the photo were demolished, probably just a few years after the photo was taken. The Gaff Bar in Falkirk's Flesh Market Close, right beside the Tollbooth, around 1930. The scene looks much the same these days, except the Gaff is now the Tollbooth Tavern, and that window bearing the name The Gaff Bar is now a door. inside the Dean Tavern in Newton Grange in 1925. It is perhaps a typical look for the period, with men in bonnets propping up the bar and not a woman in sight. Not sure what the young boy is doing there. The Dean Tavern is still in operation, not far from the rows of houses once lived in by miners working at the Lady Victoria Colliery. Although modernised, the interior structure of the Dean Tavern, including those arches, still exists. The coal pit is now the National Mining Museum. Through to Glasgow now, and the Athol Arms at the corner of Renfield Street and Renfrew Street in 1963. This pub still exists, but like many bars, it has undergone many changes over the years. These days, the exterior has big windows and lacks most of the architectural embellishments seen in the photo, like the wood panelling, the acid-etched windows and the stained glass which may have been retained from when it was the Criterion restaurant in the 1920s. As a result, the general look today is a bit plain in comparison.
Well, that was the old toll bar just at the beginning of Paisley Road West in Glasgow in 1982. And this is it today, just 40 years later. It's an example of a perfectly preserved Victorian pub interior and it's just very rare, it's unusual to get such a well-preserved interior as this. The only change that you may have noticed between uh, the photograph and just now is the absence of um, screens or dividers along this edge of the the bar counter. There's probably three or four of them, which just gave you a bit of perhaps additional privacy from other people who may have been sat at the bar counter. It's a shame they've gone, but as I say, the rest of the pub is absolutely ast astonishing. And as I said earlier, given the destruction that has taken place in Scotland's pubs over the decades, when pubs were taken over, they were remodelled, renovated, and invariably had their interiors ripped out and replaced with um, something different to cater for modern tastes and trends. It is the fact that this survived for around 130 years, virtually intact, is nothing short of a miracle. I'm Eddie Burns. Take care.